the Lady of the Winds watched the black ship as it closed on the harbor of Pucuria, her heart heavy. The ship was filled with the dead and the dying. Their faces were white and gaunt. Many of them had not eaten for days, and the others had only enough food to get them this far. They had not known what had become of the islander or of a ship's crew. When she'd left, all she had been able to do was leave. A woman who was once the Lady of the Winds had known what was needed and done what she could. She'd sent the winds, she'd sent the waves, and she'd sent the men in ships. But that was all she could do. It hadn't been enough. And they all knew that, though none would say it aloud. And now here was another ship, another of the dead to add to those who had already come ashore. There had been no survivors among those who'd come on the first ship, only death and loss and despair. The woman who was once the Lady of the Winds did not know if any had escaped from the second ship, and she hoped not. She did not know why they had come here, of all places, but she knew it could not be good. She felt a sense of urgency, a need to go down to the beach to greet the new arrivals and offer whatever aid she could but she didn't. She couldn't. She needed to rest, to recover her strength. The winds had taken their toll on her. She'd had to leave them behind when she had gone back into the ocean, but she had not wanted to. She had had to turn away from the sea and her beloved wind sisters. It was a sacrifice leaving them, but she had had no choice. She had had to go. She could not remain behind to be captured and questioned. She did not know if she had escaped detection or if the mages who were searching for her had simply not bothered to look very hard at the crew of a ship. She doubted it. She didn't want to think about what might have happened to her wind sisters. That would be like trying to think of her children without her, and that was something she had promised herself she would never do again. The wind sisters were her children. She'd made them from the wind and water. She had shaped them from air and water and given them life. But they were also as to command her wind children. They answered to her. Her heart ached for them. She would never hear them in the wind, never feel them in the sea, but she knew they were there. The sea called out to them, and the winds answered. She could hear them in her mind, calling to her, even though she would never hear their voices. They were lost to her forever now, and she grieved for them. She had no choice. She could not stay on land for fear of being caught and interrogated by mages who would never understand why she had left her wind sisters behind. She felt a chill of foreboding, but she pushed it aside and went down to the beach to meet the new arrivals. She waited, standing at the top of the stairs, watching as the men struggled ashore with their burdens. They were a weary group, with a look of men who had not slept in many days, and they looked around warily as they trudged ashore. Some of them carried wounded, men who moaned and cried out in pain as they tried to hold up their burdens. Some of them bore the dead. There were many of those and they looked as though they would never stop crying out for their mothers. They were a grim and disheveled group, exhausted and wounded. They came down the stairs slowly and hesitantly, casting worried looks around them, their expressions showing fear and confusion as they looked around for help. They seemed unaware that anyone else was there, and that was a problem for them, because there was someone else there. She could sense the presence of one of them as soon as he came through the door, even before he saw her standing there. His energy reached out to hers and his scent washed over her. He was a powerful man, with an aura of power about him, though it was dark and unpleasant, more akin to that of a demon than a man. He was a man who had turned his back on his people to embrace a darkness that had cost him everything.